Welcome back guys. Today's video I'm going to go over 351 swap headers and I'm going to give you a comprehensive overview so the things that you're likely to run into you can learn from both my mistakes as well as things that I've uncovered as part of my journey getting these headers into the car. It's been anything but trouble free and I'm hoping that by passing along some of this information, it can help you avoid some of the trials and tribulations I went through. So some of the information I'm going to be going over today uh, is not necessarily all in one place. Also, some of the information I'm going to go over uh, will apply to, say, a 351 in a truck uh, or a van or whatever that you might be building. So with that, let's get rolling. So the first challenge that you have to overcome is selecting your headers. There are a handful of options out there. Uh, probably the easiest one is uh, BBK makes a inch and three quarter uh, 351 swap header, basically designed for the Fox body Mustang. Uh, and you can even buy the uh, mid pipe that goes with that. Your next option is going to be for aftermarket headers from Headman, uh, Kooks. And then if you can find some used AccuFab or RCI headers, they're no longer in business, but you might find those used. Another option for you would be 302 headers. Um, this is where I'm gonna probably give the big red X to this guy. Not really gonna be a fan of that based on what I went through and I'm gonna go over some of this. I would strongly discourage anyone, if you're, just, if you're thinking you're gonna slap 302 headers, especially long tubes, uh, they'll fit. They'll fit easily right up along the heads. But once you get down underneath, you'll see, and I'm gonna go again, like I said, I'm gonna go over that the issues you're going to run into if you try and use 302 headers on a 351 based build. Now, I'm using RCI headers. Uh, the company, again, is out of business. Uh, the owner uh, apparently passed away earlier in 2022. Now, the challenge for me is I'm using an AOD transmission. And if you're using an AOD transmission, this makes all the difference in the world in choosing your, your headers. It can be an absolute nightmare, and it was for me. So in the case of an AOD, you know, I had so much of a headache with mine that if I were to do this all over again, I actually would probably just spend the money and get custom headers, which is your last option. Uh, maybe not so much for a manual transmission, but for an AOD, I would strongly consider it. Okay, first thing that you're going to run into before you even put a header on the car, make sure that whatever bolt that you're using will clear the header in the flange. So you're going to need to get some heat, some either map gas or propane, heat up this header, and then just start wailing away with a hammer. Uh, if you don't do this, you'll only be able to get a wrench on one side, and that's really gonna make life difficult, especially when you start trying to install the bolts in the back. Or similarly, the bolts that are on the inside of the radius, if you don't clear these out, it's just gonna make installing these bolts very difficult. And the easiest way to check to make sure that you've actually clearanced them to the proper uh, depth is that you should be able to get your wrench all the way on. Um, this way you kind of know, um, and this will also clear the washer that's behind the bolt. The next thing I recommend you do, spend short money. I think this is like five or 10 bucks. You can even make one of these if you want. Get a 3 8 16 thread chaser, and even with brand new heads, make sure that you clean out all your header bolt holes. If you don't, Murphy's Law, it'll be the one in the back. Uh, sometimes these bolts can drag a little bit, and especially when you're dealing with the header and the gasket in between there, uh, it is best practice to do this. And the 3 8 16 is used quite commonly on many locations uh, on a Ford motor, so uh, it's money well spent. Okay, header bolt selection. Really, um, there's kind of really two options. Uh, the ARP, most people get the, I think probably the most popular, are the three quarter inch ARP head bolts. And then there is the stage eight. Uh, the only thing to be aware of and make sure that you take into account is again, when you're clearancing, notice the bolt head is bigger on the stage eight. So. Uh, if you're going from, say, a 302 long tube, uh, I had BBK inch and 5 eighths. So none of the issues that I'm talking about uh, today and issues did I ever have to deal with on the 302. 
So if you're thinking, hey, I got these BBKs and have this problem, I'm gonna buy them and I'm gonna slap them on, life's gonna be good, maybe. <laughs> good luck. Uh, with the Stage 8, you can see here, uh, these dudes, these little pieces are supposed to prevent the bolt from turning. So you can see what they look like on the face, but on the back side. And again, when we're what I was just talking about with clearancing, you, you're going to have to clearance that header that much more. So on mine, um, there is no way I actually bought a set of these stage eights. There's no way in no way in the world I was going to you know, narrow down my headers that far to get these to clear. So this was a no-go. Then the next option you have is you get your choice between 12 point and six point. So I've got several of these packs from over the years. Um, I actually prefer the 12 point. And the biggest reason is um, you, oftentimes you have limited access when you're in and around the header. So a lot of, a lot of times you're just making, you know, portions of a turn. So uh, I like the security of having the 12 point getting the box end wrench uh, on the end of it. And then it just gives you more degrees of freedom as you're turning. Whereas with the six point, um, you know, you kind of turn in a flat at a time. I just prefer the 12 point, especially in the back. Um, in fact, that's what I use. Now, probably the most challenging bolt by far is the one uh, behind the booster. So this is a 93 Cobra booster, 351 with the valve covers on. There's not a lot of space in there. Uh, in fact, uh, with the AGE K member, which pushes the motor further back, you pretty much can't get that back bolt from underneath. So you can't you know, put your hand up from underneath. The only way to get it is from up top. So I used a Milwaukee stubby with a short extension and a 3-8 socket on the end. And this was a godsend because it could fit underneath. Uh, I could get it between the steering shaft, the brake booster, and still cleared enough an angle and I can get full engagement on that. So this might be another thing you wanna consider is getting a stubby quarter inch wrench. So as far as gasket material, uh, you can see you don't have a lot of room to maneuver in here. Uh, I've seen people that mention about using copper RTV. With the amount of space and moving things around in here, I, I almost laugh even thinking about even trying something like that in here. Between trying to move it in, get it in position, hold it, I, it would just be one big hot mess. So I'm sticking with paper gasket for now. If if I need to, I might consider some other gasket material if I have leaks. Um, but my headers were nice and flat. So no issues there. So that's the other thing before you put that in the car. And a lot of the, what I'm going to tell you is you really want, before you even start getting going on this, do all this stuff before you get in the car. My flanges were nice and flat. So I didn't have to mess with anything. If your flanges are not flat, Take a belt sander or and do something to sand those flat. If you have to, even take them to a machine shop. It's worth the it's worth the hassle of doing that up front, because if there if those flanges aren't flat, you're going to get leaks and potential false leans. Okay, so now the biggest hassle that I faced when I did this, and unfortunately, uh, I learned this the hard way. So guys, learn from my mistakes here. Prior to putting the motor into the car. I basically had mocked up the header. Everything was fine. Um, I you know, made sure that everything was flat. I actually bolted them in and looked pretty good, but I failed to do one thing. And that was, I did not, when I mated the transmission to the motor outside the car, I did not check to see with the shifter cable, the AOD shifter cable installed. This is the headache. When it comes to a 351 base header, the issue is not clearing the steering shaft, most likely. Uh, you can usually get around that. Uh, the issue is usually not clearing uh, the bottom of the firewall. It's more often than not clearing the shifter. And so you can see here, I had to beat the snot out of the end of my collector uh, to get it to clear. And there's really no other way around it. Now, had I gotten custom headers, Looking at this on profile, my issue was the header, it cleared the, it cleared the pan, uh, it cleared everything, was fine, except that collector was so close to my shifter that literally was going to either bind against the cable or the shifter. So not only did I have to clearance it, but then I also had to have the bracket 
the shifter bracket modified to move the cable up and get it away. So just, you know, while you're sitting there thinking of other ideas, well, you should have done this, should have done that. You can't stick a pipe into the end of this collector and start reaping on it and think that you're not going to bend or tweak the collector. And in fact, I thought my, I thought good about it. And talking to uh, a couple of professionals that own shops, they strongly urged me not to go reaping on that. It's one thing if you had to go like an eighth of an inch, but I had to go three quarters to an inch way too far. And all you're going to do is risk damaging your flanges or something else. So I had to basically put it on a trailer, take the car, get it to a shop. And then uh, they actually helped me modify that bracket, uh, my AOD shifter bracket. We took about an inch off and it moved up the, the whole assembly uh, for the AOD uh, shifter cable up about an inch. And that was able, you know, was able to get it to clear. So that really um, is one of the reasons why it's taken longer. I had to arrange a trailer. I had to arrange to uh, get an appointment at a shop, et cetera, et cetera. So it really became one gigantic headache. So I'm hoping, you know, word of advice here, make sure you mock up with the AOD cable on there. You will thank yourself because you will see immediately if your collector is running into it. So while we're on the topic of collectors, something else I recommend you do uh, when you buy these is have the uh, O2 sensor bungs pointing outwards, uh, outboard to the car, not inwards, because you, especially, uh, especially on an AOD, they're probably going to be going directly into the uh, transmission pan. You might be able to get away with it on a T5, you know, a manual transmission. But in my case, if I had put those inboard, like in, in the stock position, there's no way they would have fit. Okay, next issue. Before you put things in the car, get your brake lines as far over as possible. Uh, I don't know if it quite shows up here, uh, but down underneath you can see uh, I have some metal ties uh, and I actually pulled my brake lines back. If you don't do that, so you can see, I probably have a good half inch of clearance and I might even take, you know, put a slit down a spark plug boot and just put that around my brake lines. Uh, so something else before you even put it, you know, if you don't have the engine in the car or if you don't have the headers on yet, it is far easier to get access down there. So anyways, now I have good clearance. So it's something else you want to be aware of um, in planning ahead. So something else to be prepared for. Before you put the headers in the car, you're probably going to want to go ahead and remove your steering shaft. There's two 9 16th bolts and nuts down on the bottom. And then there is a nut uh, up underneath. I don't know if I can get, really get a good shot underneath there. I'll get a shot here. Uh, there's a bolt down by the, the U joint. And you're going to need to go ahead and remove that because you basically won't be able to, it's gonna thread through your headers. Uh, I'm not sure of any of them that don't. Maybe the BBK ones, maybe they're pushed over. But I think for the vast majority of uh, long tube headers for a 351, pretty much I think all of them, you're gonna thread the steering shaft through the headers themselves. You just go right up through. So this is obviously something that's drastically different than 302 headers. Okay, another item you're gonna have to sort out. It's gonna be your oil dipstick. More than likely, you're going to be using an aftermarket pan. It's obviously not going to be the same as a 302. Um, also, the location of where this passes by, it's going by your engine mount. And so between all the different options that are out there for headers, as well as the engine mounts, you know, there's not really going to be a one-size-fits-all. So I just used some map gas, heated this up, and bent it as I need. It clears. I will be going back and throwing some uh, some heat wrap around here. So I probably have about three eighths of an inch. It's definitely not touching. If it is touching, you absolutely want to put some kind of heat wrap in there. Anyway, it's just one more thing you got to sort out when you're doing a 351 with your headers. You're going to need to sort out your dipstick. Okay, so I have some pictures here for you. I'm going to sure really this is uh, for the 302 guys. You can look here and you can see on face the initial issue I had where the collector, although it's in the correct position to pass through under the mount and go by the transmission, it was hitting the cable uh, for my shifter. 
if you were a 302 guy and you were if you were using 302 headers thinking that they're going to work this is where you're likely to run into problems your engine on a 351 is going to be moving in the angle that we're looking at here it's going to be moving uh, upward and to the left which is the wrong way that you want to be going so if you look right here really um, if i were to have a set of headers done by the time i got a trailer and paid a shop to modify and and fix all my header issues so that that cable could clear i would have been probably just as cheap to buy a set of headers now in my case I have no issues with ground clearance. Um, it's actually, I was quite surprised because I had seen a lot of concern about ground clearance. Uh, however, just be aware, I'm using an AGK member. So, you know, this is, as we've come to find out in these builds, this is basically a war against geometry. Uh, if you have a different K member, you know, your geometry could be slightly different. Your motor could be further, slightly forward or back, or it could be higher or lower. Uh, so all those things have to be taken into account. I can just tell you in my application uh, the problems that I ran into. Okay, so now the final aspect of your exhaust. Uh, obviously, you've got the header, but then you're going to have to go to the mid pipe. Now, I had the BBK off road H pipe, so I had them chop off the ends of my BBK mid pipe and then mated it up with V band clamps, uh, the three inch collectors, to, uh, and then basically were able to mate them up directly. So you can see here, it came out pretty decent. As far as a set of header mid-pipe combination that just works out of the box, the only one that I'm aware of that you can you can buy is the BBK version. They actually sell a mid-pipe that goes to long tubes. That combination is for manual transmission only. Buyer beware, if you have an AOD, I would be very reluctant to go down that path. This To say this was a headache would be an understatement in terms of the amount of time I spent under the, under the car trying to figure out how to make it work. You know, I had planned on getting my car running, you know, basically open header before I took it to the, took it to a shop, but I had no choice. I had to get it, get it on a trailer and get past this because if you got to lift the motor or move anything else and I get everything else installed in here, just, just a headache getting it all sorted out. Okay. So with that guys, you can see I'm past all my exhaust issues. So as the build continues, so the name of the game here is prep, both in being aware of what you're going to be up against uh, and doing as much of the work prior to even getting the headers in the engine into the car. The more of this you're aware of, hopefully the easier it is and you can make decisions on, you know, which direction you want to go for headers. So I hope this helps you out. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.